Hi friends, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to a great meal prep today. I have needed to do this for literally months and that is to get my freezer stocked up with lots of quick and easy meals for my family. I do this sporadically, but one of the big focus I have on a monthly meal prep like this is to get breakfast prepped. And I have some amazing recipes for you today, some of my family favorites, and we do live in central Pennsylvania. We live where it is strawberry season right now, and a neighbor of mine has a very flourishing strawberry patch. So I've been getting quarts here and there from her of strawberries. And as you can see, they are like super bright red. They are not like your average grocery store strawberries. They are so juicy and so flavorful. And I knew I had to find a way to make them last more than a couple of days in our house. So. I'm chopping up these strawberries because I'm going to be making some stuffed French toast, which is really, really easy to freeze and to reheat. And so I like to make big batches of this at a time. And I am going to be using gluten-free bread. You can use regular bread. You can use Italian bread. You can use white bread. You can use sourdough. Whatever you want to use is fine. We just have a gluten sensitivity in our house, so it works out great for us to just use a good white gluten-free bread. It gives the best flavor to lean into the French toast flavoring. So to go inside of the French toast, we are going to make a nice creamy cream cheese mixture. So I'm just mixing up some block cream cheese. Of course, this recipe will be linked below and I'm actually doubling the filling recipe. I don't know exactly how it all worked out with her amounts in the bread and whatnot, but I knew I had two good size loaves of bread that I was gonna be using to make this, and so I was kind of figuring about how much filling I was going to need. Along with the cream cheese, you're going to put in some powdered sugar as well, just to sweeten it up. You could swap this out for any type of sweetener that you want to use. You could use stevia um, or like exalitol. If you want to lower the sugar content in this, you could totally do that. And then you're going to put a little bit of sour cream in this as well. Personally, I feel like the sour cream flavor goes very, very well with like the egg flavors and what French toast is all about, I guess. <laughs> kind of has that little bit of a eggy taste when it comes to French toast and the sour cream really complements that in this filling. We're also going to add in a little splash of some lemon juice as well. I love that brand. I get it from Azure Standard when I order every couple of months and then I'm also adding in some vanilla and I measure vanilla with my heart. I love vanilla. My mom does too. I've mentioned this before but we just always dump it in as we go and it is always makes everything so good. I add vanilla to recipes that don't even call for vanilla just because I love it that much and it just amps up the flavor of any sweet baked good. So I'm going to be making up my egg and milk mixture. Now I'm just kind of going with the flow on this. I just made as much as I thought I would need for the first couple slices. I wasn't sure exactly how much I would need, so I just kept adding more half and half and more eggs as I went through dousing, dousing, dunking <laughs> the French toast in this. And of course you can use regular milk, you can use a milk alternative. Um, I just happened to have some half and half that really needed to be used up. So I decided to go ahead and use it and there goes a little bit more vanilla into the egg and cream mixture. We're adding in some cinnamon and I'm just going to kind of whisk that all together and then we'll be dunking our stuffed French toast into this mixture. Now, I started off my entire prep with this recipe because I knew it was gonna take a while to get all of the stuffed French toast fried up in my frying pan. So I figured if I started out with this, 
Then I could fry these as I was working on other recipes through the afternoon. All right, so we're gonna take a little break from all the meal prepping today, and I'm gonna tell you about Wild. I am partnering with Wild today. I have been loving this deodorant. Honestly, I'm really picky when it comes to deodorants, and this one I've literally been telling my sister-in-laws about. The scents are absolutely incredible, and that's not even the best part. Wild is made with natural ingredients and has no harsh chemicals. They are free from parabens and aluminum salts, which are really important to me, and they have so many different great scents. Wild cuts out single-use plastic with reusable cases and compostable refills. I think this is an absolutely genius system and I'm able to order it in a subscription so that I have plenty of refills and I don't have to constantly add it to my list for the store. Wild is powered by plants. It is vegan and cruelty free and they also have this fantastic body wash. Honestly, whenever I realized I could get a couple refills of this scent, I was so excited because this smells out of this world. Whenever I am in the shower, I feel like I'm in a spa. It smells so good. This is their honey and almond. If you are going to pick one great scent, I can't recommend this one enough. And I mean, look at the aesthetic of this refillable pump. It is just so cute sitting in my shower. Having gone through a couple different pregnancies back whenever I was pregnant, I really got conscious on what I was putting on my body. And now my daughters are getting to the age where they're gonna start using deodorant and I am so excited to have something to introduce to them when they're ready to start doing that. Right now we are in the midst of all of our fun summer activities, so I am constantly out Side, constantly doing things in the sun. And so I've put this to the absolute test and can confirm it does really work super well. And I love the coconut and vanilla scent. That is one of my favorites. I have a few others here, but that is the one I keep going back to. So if you want my rec for your first order, get the coconut. It smells so, so good. And don't forget, you can get 20% off with my code Adeline20. I'll have all the information in the description box below for you all. And I know that you are gonna love Wild as much as I do. I've been telling everybody about it, and you need to try it out. So I am using my cast iron skillets because it makes the best French toast, which I really don't have any other skillets at this point. Love my cast iron skillets. And I'm just gonna put some butter in there. I kind of have my little assembly line set up with my cream cheese mixture, my strawberries, and then what I'm gonna dunk it all into, and then right into the frying pan. And then I also set a plate, or actually I think it was like a nine by 13, on the other side of the stove. So as I was pulling them off, I had somewhere to stack everything as I went because I did make quite a bit and I'm so happy this is all in my freezer now and I'm able to pull these out for a delicious breakfast. So all I did was coat one side of the bread with the cream cheese coating and then I layered in my strawberries and like the amount of redness in these strawberries is real life, you guys. It, they are so beautiful this time of year and they are so delicious. Um, so I'm just layering those in between the bread and then I also put cream cheese on the other on one side of the other slice of bread Then I'm just gonna kind of make a sandwich situation with that and then I'm going to dunk that whole sandwich into the French toast mixture and I am kind of giving it just a couple of seconds in the mixture to help it soak up some of the egg and cream mixture. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and put that onto a medium heat pan. I did preheat it a little bit just to kind of get it rolling so that whenever the French toast hit the pan, it's going to start frying right away. Now, to keep my assembly line going and to get kind of ahead of the game and moving on to the next recipe, I just went ahead and filled my frying pan and then I started preparing these stuffed French toast sandwiches so that I could use up all of my ingredients and just have a big pile of those ready to go onto the frying pan as I was doing my other things through the day, like I said. So I like to explain my method a little bit because I think a lot of people 
get very intimidated by these big freezer meal prep days. And it just really helps to think through the process of how can I get this done the fastest? What needs to cook the longest? How does this need to cook or bake? Can I bake two things at the same time, finding recipes that both need to be baked at 350 um, degrees Fahrenheit, you know, for about the same time, or maybe you have two different timers going. Those are just all things to take into account when you are prepping a bunch of things at once. And I do do videos sometimes where I do individual recipes one at a time, but the reality is it's the most effective, the most fast way to go about it all if you are doing multiple recipes at a time. So we're gonna leave the French toast to fry in the background and we are gonna move on to our next recipe. Now, this is something I used to make all the time and I'm definitely getting back into the swing of doing this because I personally am the one that eats a lot of this and that is sheet pan or baked omelets. You can go crazy with the fillings on this. I've done so many different proteins. You can do bacon, sausage, hot sausage. You can do, um, just like literally anything you can think of that you would want to put into an omelet. I decided to go with like a veggie and cheese combo. This is what I had on hand. And I have been on a major kick with these baby bell peppers for a very long time, but we love them in so many different recipes. Um, I just decided to slice them up and put them into the bottom of my sheets. I also decided to do two cookie sheets this day. I was thinking I was gonna do one and I was like, this is crazy. I'm already mixing up all of these eggs. I might as well double it and get a lot of portions of baked omelet in the freezer. And honestly, the last little while, I've been eating so much of these in the morning. It's making sure I'm actually eating something in the morning. I'm terrible at under eating. And so that's one of my goals right now is to make sure that I'm actually eating meals and eating healthy nutrients all day, every day. And so, I am just going to put those in the bottom of the pan, like I said, and now I'm gonna mix up my eggs. Now, I did do about, I think it was 30 eggs. I wanna say 30 eggs. 30 eggs per sheet. I do not do this many eggs if I'm adding a protein in, like sausage or bacon. Um, just depending on what else I'm putting in it. If I'm gonna fry up a bunch of mushrooms and do like a mushroom Swiss omelet, I've done that before, so yummy. Um, you don't need to have as many eggs, but because the main protein was going to be just the eggs with some cheese, I decided to fill it up with eggs. So I did about 30 per pan, and then to make the eggs extra fluffy, this is kind of my little way of making scrambled eggs. My girls ask for this all the time. I add in some sour cream. And I did all of this in my stand mixer. I get lots of questions about this stand mixer. I will be sure to leave the link below for you guys because it is not a KitchenAid, but it is a pretty nice large capacity mixer for a portion of the cost of a KitchenAid. It's an off brand on Amazon. And to be honest, I have had it for years and it's done very, very well for me. Um, so I'm putting that all in here so that it's just easier to mix it up. And I did mix up one cookie sheet or sheet pan at a time. Um, I just felt like it might be a bit more doable instead of trying to do all of those eggs <laughs> at one time. The other thing I did is I got out some of my onions that I prepped for the freezer. You all know I love my onions and my garlic in the freezer. And I threw those right in to the mixture with the eggs. So the onions are all mixed in there as well. And I just, they were a little bit frozen yet. I thought that the beater would help to break up the onions. So I'm just gonna fill up one pan with this. And I did put my salt and pepper in the mixture, the egg mixture as well. So this is really the basics of how I do sheet pan omelets. Like even if I'm doing bacon and um, sausage and things like that. I generally put all of that into the bottom of the sheet. Then I do my egg mixture and pour it over top like this. So pretty much doing like my fillings for the omelet in the bottom of the pan. Now, because of course we're not having any of the savory meats, I wanted to add in cheese. Cheese is a must. And what I did is I just kind of went through my refrigerator, grabbed the cheese that needed to be used up. So I think a couple blocks of 
orange or yellow cheddar went into this and then also like a random block of some pepper jack cheese that I don't really know why I had it in there. I think I got it for a recipe I was gonna do and then didn't use it. So I grabbed all of that, just mixed it together, used my food processor to make everything go very quickly since it was a lot of cheese. And then I just topped it off by dividing the cheese between the two pans. Like this doesn't get any easier guys. One of the absolute easiest things that you can prep for yourself is sheet pan omelets. And think about how many breakfasts you're gonna get out of this, especially if you don't have a large family or maybe you don't have any children. This is a huge amount of meals in and of itself and look how simple that was. You don't even need a mixer. You can use a whisk and use some good elbow grease and whisk up your eggs that way. Um, it's just really easy. As you're putting these omelets into the oven, just just take your time, take your time. <laughs> they can pour, dump really easily. And I know some people suggest to put the sheet actually in the oven and then pour the eggs in, but I feel like that would be very complicated and I would lose a lot of heat from my oven while I was trying to put the cheese on and all of that. So just gently, gently putting it into the oven is the way to go. So. The next project we are gonna start in on is we are going to make breakfast sandwiches. So I, like I said, have a daughter that does have a gluten sensitivity. And initially I was gonna make all of these breakfast sandwiches with English muffins, but for some reason, the two different stores I went to, I could not find gluten-free English muffins, but they did have bagels. And my daughter was like, let's just do bagel sandwiches, which was perfect because that led into me discovering mini bagels for bagel sandwiches. I don't know why this has never occurred to me before with having younger children that don't always eat an entire massive, huge breakfast sandwich. Why would I not make them in a mini bagel? I think it just honestly works perfectly. So great suggestion. And my store had them on sale, two bags for, I don't even know, it wasn't much. So I was able to get two nice size bags of mini bagels to make my regular sandwiches. And then they obviously didn't have mini bagels in gluten-free. I think that's a pretty big rarity, but I also found regular and I just decided to make up sandwiches with kind of double the fillings and then just cut them in half for my other daughter. And they have been loving these sandwiches. These have been a huge request in our house and in the morning whenever I ask them what they want for breakfast, breakfast sandwiches. And honestly, we are a pretty big bacon family. So having bacon in there with the egg and cheese, I think really mm, just made it so, so delicious. So I did start out by toasting all of the bagels. It really didn't take much time. And I could have done that in the oven on a cookie sheet. However, we really love toasting things in our skillets with butter. And so I just went the little extra mile to toast all of the bagels in butter on the skillets. And then again, I'm going another extra mile because I have made breakfast sandwiches before where I bake the eggs and I cut them into squares and then you put them in the breakfast sandwiches. A lot of you have probably seen that before. It's a very fast way to do eggs for breakfast sandwiches, but our family really loves a good fried egg in a breakfast sandwich. Again, I think it has to do with the butter, frying the egg in the butter versus maybe a cooking oil that's keeping it from sticking to a sheet pan in the oven if you're baking the egg. So I just went ahead, put the butter in the pan. I made them pretty much how I would make them if I was making these to eat right away. And that is just frying an egg and I am going to go through and break the yolks because I do want those yolks to fry. It's just gonna help with the reheat process whenever we go to reheat these sandwiches. If I make these fresh, we do enjoy a good 
as we say in our house, dippy egg on our breakfast sandwich. I know not everybody uses that term, but that's something I grew up saying. And yeah, I don't know where it came from. Let me know in the comments. Do you say dippy eggs for, I guess it would be over easy is actually the term most people use, but we like a good dippy egg in our sandwich. However, like I said, with the reheat process, it wouldn't really come out very dippy if you were gonna freeze this and then reheat these. So I just broke the yolks flipped them over uh, after I salt and peppering them, and then I added in my cheese. Again, I am just slicing blocks of cheese. I do get pre-sliced cheese at times, but you guys, even after doing this, I was just reminded once again how well this cheese melts and how delicious it is when it's not pre-sliced. It's just so much better to slice cheese like this. And I will leave this cheese slicer linked below. I get questions about it whenever people see it. I think it's something that a lot, a lot of people don't know about. Super simple, handy hand slicer. And we, it's a staple in our house. We use it probably daily um, to slice cheese. And you can get a big fancy cheese slicer. In fact, I've spent money on a very nice cheese slicer and it still did not slice as nice as this little hand cheese slicer. So I can't recommend it enough. I think it's like five bucks or something like that on Amazon. Um, and it's a nice handy little tool. So now I'm actually building my breakfast sandwiches. So I just made sure I got the bottom portion of the bagels. These are the regular bagels, not the gluten-free ones. I put the egg right from the pan onto the bagel, put the bacon on, and then I, you can see how stringy the cheese is. It's so great. And then I just put the lid on top of these. There's no condiments inside of these. We can add those later when we reheat if they want to. But honestly, with as melty as that cheese is, it really doesn't even need any mayo or ketchup or anything like that. It is just so delicious. So at this point, my bacon was all fried up. So I went ahead and started my other pan um, on frying eggs since I was trying to fry all the eggs at once and this was quite a madhouse for a minute I was like building breakfast sandwiches as fast as I possibly could because things were coming off of the skillet and stuff was being Done all at the same time and it was crazy, but you know what now I have I don't even know I think it was like I want to say it was over 40 portions like 40 breakfast sandwiches Till it was all done and said, which is so awesome. That means that my kids have a great wholesome breakfast every morning for the next how long, <laughs> along with the other things I'm prepping. And you could also change it up. You could do a sausage patty on these. Um, you could even add in like a hash brown. I've seen that done on breakfast sandwiches. I feel like that would be really, really good. And I think there's even some like restaurants that do that they put a hash brown in their breakfast sandwich and also you could change this up for sourdough you could change this up for sprouted bread i've done obviously breakfast burritos with similar fillings um just there's the possibilities are truly endless <laughs> and i just tried to make sure that i am stacking them in the correct order having the bottom bagel bottom of the bagel on the bottom and then I just got out my cooling racks that I use for cookies and things like that and just let everything kind of cool on those racks before putting them into freezer bags. You could individually wrap these sandwiches. I've done that before. You could put them in tin foil so that you can pop them in the oven to reheat. Um, but I just decided to go the easy route and that is just put these sandwiches individually into a large freezer bag, a gallon freezer bag. And because of them being bagels, I felt like they wouldn't stick together too badly and we could just grab out the amount of sandwiches that we needed. Um, another thing you could swap up with these sandwiches is the cheese. I used, I think it was like a yellow cheddar block and a white cheddar block that I had in my refrigerator that needed to be used up. Um, but you could do pepper jack cheese. I also, I don't know if this is, something you can buy everywhere, but I love horseradish cheese. That's something that we can get locally at a few of our small um, little Mennonite stores. There is just so much you could do. You could add veggies to these too. Broccoli, peppers, onions, um, just pretty much anything you can think of.
All right, so while the breakfast sandwiches were cooling down, the crazy kind of slowed down for me with putting all these together. Um, I wanted to use up the rest of the strawberries that I got from my neighbor. And so I decided to go ahead and put them top, take the tops off, put them all in a large bowl. I'm gonna bring back an old thing I used to do. Many of you have been around for a long time because I used to make these all the time and that is the homemade yogurt sticks. I love these for my kids. Actually, to be honest, the girls have been eating through these in the last few days since I've made them and they are just like, mom, I remember when you used to make these all the time. Why did you stop making them? We love them. So they are just such a huge hit in our house. So all I did was put the strawberries into a big bowl, like I said, and then I'm using my immersion blender to just smash the strawberries. Um, you can do this with so many different combinations to make the flavor you want. You can do banana, strawberry, pineapple, mango. You can do blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. You could do a berry mixture. Um, you could even go crazy and do like acai berries in it if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. You just want to blend up your fruit and I do make homemade yogurt. However, this week it was just not gonna happen. So I got some pre-made yogurt, plain yogurt from the store. And this is where you can also decide how you wanna sweeten it. This is one of the reasons that I like making my own homemade yogurt sticks. In fact, when I'm not making them, it's a very rare occurrence that I purchase store-bought yogurt sticks because they are so sugar laden they're almost like ice cream or something like for your kids because of how much sugar is in them i mean whenever you've got flavors like cotton candy i think that there's going to be a lot of sugar involved <laughs> i don't know why they decided that that would be a great yogurt stick flavor is cotton candy but you can sweeten it with honey i've done hu local honey i like to use that and this day i just used some liquid stevia so these don't actually have any added sugar and I also put in some vanilla and I stirred it and I tasted it um, because obviously depending on how sweet your strawberries are, depending on um, how much fruit you're putting in it, what type of fruit, it's going to really fluctuate on the sweetness of it. <laughs> so you want to just test taste. I actually even had my daughter's test taste and tell me, yeah, mom, that's great. So until we had enough stevia to sweeten the whole bowl. Now, these are these DIY <laughs> yogurt stick Ziplocs is probably the best. They do Ziploc at the top. And I just used a small funnel and a ladle and I did use a straw for a little bit to kind of help it out, but I figured out if I just jiggled it, I didn't even need to use the straw as I went through and filled these. Now off to the side, you cannot see them, but my daughters are actually helping me because all of these are closed when you get them from Amazon. I'll leave them linked below. Um, and they can be a bit challenging to get open while you're filling them. So I just set my daughters to the task. It only took them a few minutes um, to open up all of the ends of these pouches so that I could just pick them up and stick the funnel into the next one and so forth and so on. So if you don't have little helpers to help you do that, you might wanna go through and do that before you start so that the ends are open. Now, this thing comes, or this this thing, this kit, whatever you wanna call it, this pack of the yogurt stick pouches comes with a collapsible silicone funnel. I do not know how people fill these things with that. <laughs> it just is not very handy whenever it comes to filling this. I definitely prefer either a metal or plastic funnel that is stiff and you can stick it down in to the pouch as you go. Um, I just feel like the silicone collapses. It's just not very handy when it comes to filling these. So you definitely may want to grab yourself a good funnel if you're going to do this um, if you don't have one already. And this, I don't know exactly how many this made. I want to say it made 50, um, but I'm not sure. And again, it's all going to depend on how much fruit you put in it. 
and this has been a staple snack in our house and it's just i love it because there's not much sugar in it they're getting a serving of fruit they're getting protein and i know that they're having a good healthy snack All right, so once I had the yogurt sticks filled, I got my pans of omelet because at this point they were cooled. And that's something that you want to definitely have everything cooled down before you're gonna put it into freezer bags because otherwise you're gonna get a lot of condensation inside of those freezer bags and that's going to ice over and it's just not very good for something to sit in your freezer like that. So I just cut these into portion sizes that I knew I would want or my family members would want and then I put them into Ziploc bags and froze it all together. Now everything I did this day I was able to put into Ziploc bags and not really individually wrap stuff. The stuff was not going to touch enough to freeze together. So we would be able to pull out portion sizes of the French toast or the breakfast sandwiches or the baked omelet. And I didn't have to worry about individual wrapping with this stuff. And then also I do put the yogurt sticks into the freezer, um, especially right now, the weather's really heating up here in central Pennsylvania. And so having a nice cold treat is something my daughters really love. They feel like they're kind of getting an ice pop, but it's got a whole lot more nutrition in it than obviously sugar and water. <laughs> um, and so all of this went into the freezer. Another thing I love about putting together your own freezer bags and whatnot is that you can make the portion sizes that your family eats. Um, I think there's so many times that food gets wasted because stuff is either, yeah, it's in too large portion sizes for your family. I know, especially when my daughters were really little, this was so helpful because I knew how much I could get out of the freezer at a time for them and they had variety doing it like this. They've got variety. You know, they don't have to have baked omelet for an entire week for breakfast. They can choose the French toast or they can even have two yogurt sticks if they're not super hungry for breakfast or we're running out the door. I have to mention that part. This is so convenient for when you are busy you're getting your kids up, you have somewhere to be, and you can grab breakfast and take it out the door with you. I hope this video inspired you guys a whole, whole lot. Definitely hit that subscribe button. If you're new here, leave me a comment below. I love chatting with you all in the comments, and I'll see y'all in the next one.